Hello everybody, this is Solar Tiger with another wind and solar power video. Today is Sunday the 12th of June and it is raining. It's raining and very dull and gloomy. So, outside of the solar panels and if I take you inside, this is the tracer 3215BN solar charge controller, the 30 amp charge controller. But at long last, I have received the remote meter. Here is the remote meter for the Tracer 3215BN charge controller. And I will show you the meter. The meter is very handy. Okay, this is the main screen on the meter, and as you can see, on the left we have the solar panel information. The current voltage is 14.1 volts, and the current coming in is 0.4 amps. The battery bank voltage is 13.2 volts, and we have 0.2 amps going into the batteries <coughs> and on the far right we have the load information so it's 13.2 volts from the batteries and the load is drawing 0.3 amps so <coughs> sorry so the only thing not shown on this meter is the inverter because it's wired directly to the batteries so, I apologise for my sore throat, I am not feeling very well. So, we have, okay, it's the Tracer 3215BN. The charge controller has a built-in clock, but that, which you can use to set timings for the load to come on and off. But I just have it on a default of on and off when you push the the load button. Okay. So far it shows we have put 30, 30 watt hours into the batteries. It gives you a monthly total and an all time total. You have a discharge information. So, so far I've drawn 40 watt hours from the batteries. And you have a monthly total and an all time total. We have the voltage of the battery bank, which is 13.2 volts, and the current going into the batteries is 0.2 amps. It shows a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius for the battery bank, but as I don't have the remote temperature sensor, this is a default setting. And we have a maximum voltage for the battery, 13.6 volts, and a minimum voltage of 12.9 volts. So, yeah, the lowest voltage the batteries went down to. So you want to keep that voltage above, ideally 12 and a half, but it shouldn't go below 12, otherwise you'll be damaging your batteries. So the maximum voltage in the daytime that will go up to anything up to about 14.9 or 15 at which point the, tr the controller cuts out so the battery is in the boost charge mode and everything is normal there is no faults on the PV side we have a voltage of 14.1 volts and a charging current of 0.4 amps, which gives a power of 5.7 watts. Bear in mind I have 300 watts of solar panels, but the weather outside is miserable, it's pouring with rain and it is dark, hence the low value shown. We are in 
MPPT mode. The temperature of the actual controller is 26.7 degrees Celsius, which is normal. The load is drawing 0.2 amps, which is 3.3 watts. So at the moment I'm just running some USB chargers. And that is it. And I'm going to go back. I have the load control simply on manual when I press the the button on the meter or the controller just to turn the load on or off. That's just how it works for me. And if we go back to this, we have. We have a section where you can set the type of batteries you have. You can have gel, sealed or flooded. I actually have sealed AGM batteries so I choose the flooded mode because it gives me the correct voltages. You choose whichever mode gives you the correct voltages on your batteries. You can set the size of your battery bank. Mine is 300 amp hours. Alter the temperature coefficient so as the temperature changes, the charging set points are adjusted. Minus 3 millivolts per degree centigrade is the default value, and then you have all different items that you can set. These are adjustable. There is a user mode, and you can set whatever you like. Uh, I have turned the equalizing time to zero, as AGM batteries do not need equalizing. Sealed AGM type. And that's how that works. And that's just an overview of the MT50 meter that works with the Tracer 3215BN charge controller. This also works with other Tracer controllers and EP Solar controllers. So that's how that works. I have the, the display unit screwed to my desk. I was going to have it on the wall over there, but decided it was easier to read if I could get near to it. So I put it on the edge of the desk in the corner, just out of the way. This is a black unit. I have also seen white units, but I don't give you a choice when ordering it. So that is that. Just go back to that. So we have 14.1 volts on the solar panels at 0.4 amps. We have 0.2 amps going into the batteries. The battery is at 13.2 volts with a happy face above the batteries. If you have the happy face symbol then everything is working correctly. So that is that. <coughs> this is my electrical cabinet. I will be making some modifications soon. I will be removing this meter as it, as it duplicates what the display shows. And the display shows voltages of 60 volts on the solar panel side without any issue. Whereas this meter blanks out when the voltage goes over the mid 50s, so that meter is coming out. I want to remove this fuse box because I want to put some circuit breakers in. I have bought a circuit breaker. This is a dual rating AC and DC circuit breaker. It is a lupus midget. It has a rating of 415 volts AC or 125 volts DC. So this breaker can be used on DC. Only use breakers that actually have a DC rating. If you use breakers that are not designed for DC you can have a risk of the breaker catching fire if it tries to interrupt the circuit. 
So this is a dual AC DC breaker. It is from it is from a, an obsolete range of breakers. They don't make them anymore. It's made by the MCB company, Lupus Limited. Made in England and conforms to PS3871. These breakers come in black or a greyish white colour. But these are an old, obsolete type of breaker. They are no longer made. I bought this from eBay from about for about five or six pounds, and it will be going in the cabinet over here on the load side. So this is Sir Luck Tiger saying thank you for watching from a very rainy, wet, off-grid bedroom project. So until next time, thank you for watching. Thank you.